target single military aged male standing alone ranging at 400 bearing 260 can you confirm PID <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. targets into the structure I no longer have eyes bro what are you doing oh, oh sorry sorry I was, on, I was on YouTube how do you have service out here the Starlink duh Last week we released a video that was all about get home bags and the importance of having the right kit to set you up for success to get home in an emergency situation. Now to stay sort of on topic with that, this week we wanted to talk about a piece of kit that we have been utilizing here in our own setups for a number of months and we've been really enjoying it. And that of course is this piece of kit in front of me, the Starlink Mini. Now we've been utilizing the original Starlink on our shop out here in rural Washington for a number of months. It's been really great. We've been seeing really fast internet speeds um, from that satellite connection because otherwise the internet up in this part of the state is an absolute nightmare. So that's been really cool. So when Starlink Mini was released, we jumped right onto it and ordered one up and we've been testing it and running it in our kit ever since. And that's why we wanted to make this video. We wanted to talk to you a little bit about why we think it belongs in your preparedness uh, plans and also go through and break down this self-sufficient Starlink box that I've created that goes with me in a vehicle or wherever we go. So you all have probably heard of PACE plans when it comes to preparedness and setting up your communications plan. So we're not going to talk all about PACE plans today. I'm sure we're going to do a video all about that, diving into it at a future date. But what I wanted to talk about here is obviously for your PACE plan, you have your primary, your alternate, your contingency, and your emergency. That's where you get that acronym PACE. So where we think that Starlink Mini fits in great is right around your alternate communication source. Because obviously for my primary source, I'm going to be utilizing my cell phone, but as we know that in a grid down situation, uh, you may not have access, you may not have proper service, or maybe you're just simply in a rural area and you don't have any other GPS capabilities and you have to use another form of communication. And that's where the Starlink Mini really does shine. It's an extremely small, compact piece of kit. It's very lightweight. It can be deployed from a backpack or from a box or anything that you're doing, a like Pelican case, and wherever you have it in a moment's notice. And it connects to the satellites within minutes. So it really is a true plug and play option. One of the biggest reasons why we think that the Starlink Mini belongs on your PACE plan is because it's independent of any local infrastructure. So your immediate area could be affected with bad weather, storms, uh, you know, damage, power outages, cyber attacks, any of the above that could cause your immediate grid to go down and you would still be able to access different portals via your Starlink direct beam from the satellite right to your unit. And that's because Starlink has put a lot of effort into setting up their land stations to be able to self-sustain and stay online for as long as possible. So they've put a lot of effort into that for just these reasons. As we've seen in places like Ukraine and all of the horrendous hurricane weather that we had last year, Starlink really shined through and allowed rescue teams and everyday people to stay in touch with their loved ones and get outside information as quickly as possible when the grid was otherwise down. And how secure is the Starlink Mini, you might ask? Well, Starlink utilizes a system called beamforming, which beamforming, what that does is it directs the signal beam from one spot to a very specific area, that being the Starlink unit. And because of that and its wide frequencies, it makes it very, very hard to detect. We've seen that in real world situations over in Ukraine on the front lines. Between those two key factors, it has made it very hard for detection as well as jamming, and that might make it one of the most secure pieces of communications kit that is available to civilians today. A few other things about it that I think are really worth mentioning are just the sheer size of this thing. It's a very small unit. It comes in at just over two and a half pounds for the unit itself, and it can be stored in a variety of manners and set up uh, for rapid deployment. The other couple things about it that I really like is that it typically doesn't have any more than a 40 watt draw. So a variety of different battery banks and battery packs can work to power this thing as we're gonna talk about here in a second and the box that I built. And last but not least, this thing has full global connectivity. So that means that no matter where you travel around the globe, this thing will connect to a satellite in minutes and give you full internet access and full communications capabilities. And that is unmatched by any other piece of kit similar to this that are accessible to civilians. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. 
I'm gonna break down this kit that I've built out. This is my fully sustainable, self-sustaining, I should say, kind of go box built around this Pelican case for all of my Starlink mini goodies and accessories all together in one place. So I can take it on a moment's notice or keep it in the vehicle and it's worked great so far, both for camping and for just having with me wherever I go for preparedness sake. Um, so first and foremost, cause everyone's gonna ask, this is a Pelican Storm case. I got this off Facebook Marketplace for way cheaper than what it would normally cost. I don't remember the price, but um, you can definitely find a case like this uh, a lot cheaper used. And of course, right on top, we have our Starlink mini unit. And this is a new wrap from Covert Innovations, which is pretty cool. Multicam wrap front and back gives it a little bit of covertness, you know, a little bit of breaks up the pattern. And I know that they're also coming out with some pretty cool stuff as well, including scrim for Starlink and I think some vinyl covers as well. So check them out. They're a pretty cool little company out of Texas. And while I have it here, this is a little plug for an adapter plate that was 3D printed off of Etsy. I'm gonna to try to put the links for everything that I have here in the kit in the description of the video for easy access for y'all. But if you have a 3D printer, you can probably check out printing your own at home and making that work. And what this does is it allows this Starlink to be able to hook up to my tripod, um, as you'll see, and uh, keeps it a little bit more mobile. Then of course, as we're talking about it here, we have this tripod. This one is by a company called Braveheart, I think. It's honestly like an Amazon no-name brand, but it's a little carbon tripod. And I think that it costs somewhere around 20 bucks. It's fully extendable, works really well for this and battery packs and other things that you might need a mini tripod for. Definitely an inexpensive, good piece of kit to throw in this go box of sorts. Then of course, power sources, like I was saying, the Starlink offers, uh, it typically doesn't draw more than 40 watts. Now, there's been a little bit of stuff going on with Starlink itself. They've done some updates, and unfortunately, it's caused some issues with aftermarket powering. Some of the USB-C uh, adaptability has been altered or changed some, which is unfortunate, but I have not experienced any of those issues with any of the battery backups that I have here in this kit. So I'm gonna talk about that. I can't speak for other types of battery banks, but it's worth doing your own research on. So first battery is, I have one of these Anchor battery packs. This is a really great unit. It gives you your USB-C in and out, one and two, regular USB, and just is a tremendous power source for this Starlink. And this battery alone, I've powered it for eight and a half hours plus uh, on a fully charged battery. We've used it camping, we've done a bunch of testing with the power draw and it's worked flawlessly with this thing. Super small and compact. If you have nothing else, even just these three units in a backpack or something like that, gives you a really rapid deployable uh, communications center. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, then I also have a larger battery pack in here. This is a Goal Zero Sherpa 100, it's the AC. This just offers a compact and fairly lightweight additional battery source. Now running off of that battery and then jumping onto this one, this one will last a little bit longer than that. Somewhere around 15 or 16 hours I've had with this one, which is pretty cool. Now what I also do is this has a, an input for solar. So what I've done here is I have this Flex Solar uh, mini solar panel that folds out like this. Now I can connect this directly to my Goal Zero and throw this out on a sunny day, hood of the vehicle, you know, out in the field, whatever. And what this does is it doesn't directly charge or power the Starlink, but it trickle charges my Goal Zero, which allows me to keep this thing running at top speed. And then I can top that off and utilize it with the Starlink mini. So I think having a foldable mini solar panel setup is really useful. You can obviously dual purpose this and use this for charging other things as well. It does have a USB-C and a uh, USB port on the solar panel by itself. Now I just have additional cabling in here. I did go ahead and bought some additional cabling types. This is the main one that comes with the Starlink Mini, but um, it's a little bit long in a lot of cases for what I need. I bought a couple USB-C specific cables that keep things a little bit tighter and a little bit, you know, less 50 feet of cable is, is not something I always want to carry around. I do have a wall charger in here that came with it just in case that's what I end up needing and then I have this little pouch up here that just has other little cables and accessories for the Starlink itself so overall not a very expensive kit especially when you buy a Pelican case used and pick up this other stuff on like Amazon or whatever and you can really have a self-sustaining go box just like this one to keep in your vehicle or with you wherever you go and then you know when you need to utilize that alternate on your pace plan the a the alternate on the pace plan you have something like your Starlink with you at all times now I just want to grab this and it's worth mentioning 
This is an EcoFlow, and this unit right here, it's not something that you're gonna lug around as it's pretty heavy. You know, it does offer a lot of different uses, and we like to keep it in the vehicle with us, especially when we're out doing overlanding trips. And this thing right here will power the Starlink through AC for 24 hours to 30 hours. But again, not something that you're gonna wanna take with you on a go box like this. Now, speed-wise, the Starlink has been nothing short of extraordinary for us. We have been hitting 250, 260 or more megabytes a second on a connection. And for anyone who knows anything about satellite internet, that's extremely fast. Because of the way that the satellites are, they're lower in the sky that connect directly to the Starlink units. They're able to have very fast speeds directing that beam directly to this unit. And that is also causing it to have very, very low latency. There's not enough good things I can say about this We've had great success and great luck with it, and that's why we're doing this little video for you all. I hope it's been informative. Figure out your pace plan, check out Starlink, hit us in the comments if you have any other questions. We're always happy to nerd out on this stuff, and we just wanna see a more resilient you. Thanks.